Welcome to Lionel's Train Town. In this first job, you'll learn how to drive a locomotive, switch tracks, and couple cars. Let's begin. First, select the steam locomotive. Simply click on it. Good. The locomotive appears on the toolbar at the bottom right of the screen. A train can be controlled by either clicking on the throttle or clicking on the left or right of the selected car. The throttle controls a train's speed. The red position stops the train. Clicking on a train will also stop the train. The three green positions move the train to the right. Clicking to the right of a selected car will also move the train to the right. The blue positions move the train left. Clicking left of a selected car will move the train left. A train has three speeds. Both the color and arrows indicate the current speed of a car. The car also has a small speed indicator that changes to reflect its current speed. The red indicates the car has stopped. Now, let's drive the train to the right. Either click on one of the green positions or to the right of the selected car. The car moves to the right. Now, let's learn how to switch the track. If the train is too close to the switch, it will not operate. However, here the train is properly positioned. Click on the switch. If position changes, you may switch it back by clicking on the switch again. Now, drive the train on to the second rail line. Switch the track so that the locomotive will back down the second rail line. Okay, you're ready to couple two cars. The trick is not to go too fast. Slowly back the train down and couple it to the caboose. Watch your speed. Time penalty. You were going too fast to safely couple with the caboose. If this happened during the game, you could receive a time penalty or you might even have to start the job over. Now, let's uncouple the caboose. Back the train down onto the third line. Stop when the caboose is in the loading zone. Okay. Position the cursor between the coal tender and the caboose. The indicator will change to an animating couple. Click to uncouple the caboose. The caboose is now uncoupled. To end the job, stop the locomotive in front of the roundhouse. Congratulations! You did it! You now know how to control a locomotive. You've switched tracks and coupled cars. The next job will teach you how to pick up and deliver loads. This job teaches you the basics in loads and deliveries. You learn how to keep your locomotives fueled and how to pick up and deliver loads. First, select the steam locomotive. This engine needs both water and coal to operate. The coal and water gauges on the toolbar are almost empty. If they ever become completely empty, your train will shut down. First, let's fill up with coal. Drive your train to the coal tipple to the right. Stop the train when it's under the tipple. The coal tipple will automatically fill the train. Good. Now fill the water the same way. You've successfully fueled your steam locomotive. Keep a close eye on your engine fuel. If you run out, you may have to restart your job. Notice the small fruit icon above the farm. The green square around the icon indicates a load can be picked up. The red stop sign around the same fruit icon indicates a load needs to be delivered. It's your job to pick up loads, then deliver them where they're needed. Drive your train to the farm and stop when the refrigerator car is in the loading zone. Click on the fruit icon to load the refrigerator car with fruit. Now, deliver the fruit by stopping the refrigerator car next to the cannery. Click on the icon to unload the fruit. Great! Train Town residents will now be able to buy canned fruit. Next, we're going to learn how to use the map. First, to view the map, click on the map 
tab on the toolbar. You can see a small blueprint of the entire track. Now, click anywhere on the map area. The game screen centers on where you clicked. To the right of the map are three buttons. The magnifying glass with a plus will zoom in on the map, making it easier to read. The magnifying glass with a minus zooms out. The button with the letter I will toggle the icons on and off. Use it to view the screen without all those cluttering icons. We're almost done with this job. Finally, let's pick up a few passengers. Click on the passenger locomotive. This locomotive is diesel, and it's almost out of fuel. Drive the passenger train up to the diesel filling tank. Stop the train when the locomotive is next to the tank. It will automatically refill. Now, pick up some passengers. There is a times two symbol next to the passenger load icon. This means that there are two loads of people who need to be picked up. Stop the train when the first passenger car is next to the depot. Load the passengers by clicking on the passenger icon. Move the train till the second passenger car lines up with the depot and pick up the second load of people. To finish the job, drive the passenger train off the screen to the right. That was some mighty fine work. You refueled both a steam and a diesel locomotive. You've learned how to pick up and deliver loads, and you've learned how to use the map. Very impressive. Signals are known as semaphores. In this job, you'll be taught what a semaphore is, how it works, and how to place your own signals. Watch the steam locomotive. A collision with a passenger train was averted using a semaphore. The flashing red lights mean that a train will stop when it comes near this signal. Now, click on the semaphore. The lights will change to blue. When a train approaches a blue signal, it will reverse directions. Click again on the semaphore. The lights will change to green. Green indicates the train can pass by the signal uninterrupted. When the train hits this blue semaphore, it will automatically reverse directions. As the train reverses direction, you'll be able to click on the switch and redirect the train down the new rail line. I will control the train. When the train approaches the blue semaphore, switch the track. Excellent! And the red semaphore stops the locomotive. You may also place your own signals. Use the right mouse button to drop a signal near the bumper. These signals work just like semaphores, except they're one-shot flags. Once a train uses them, they disappear. Set this signal to blue by clicking on it. Good! It's set exactly the same as permanent semaphores. Place a red signal here. As the train approaches the blue signal, switch the track to conduct the train to the depot. And that's it. Semaphores are used in a variety of situations, from railroad crossings that keep automobiles and pedestrians safe, to sophisticated loading processes in real-world freight yards. Railroads have several special tracks. In this job, you'll learn how to use the turntable, bascule bridge, and rotary dumper to pick up and deliver a load of iron ore. Iron ore is necessary for many types of manufacturing. To pick up a load of iron ore, you'll need to fill a special railroad car called a hopper. The hopper cannot be loaded. You'll need to back the hopper into the loading zone. To do this, stop the train when both the locomotive and the hopper are on the turntable. Now, click on the turntable. Two small markers appear. Click on the red marker. The green marker will turn toward the red marker. The turntable will stop when the two markers line up. 
Now, back the hopper down onto the loading zone and pick up the load of iron ore. Okay, to deliver the load, you'll need to drive the train over the bascule bridge. Stop the train to the left of the bridge. The signal will flash either green, indicating the bridge is clear, yellow, the bridge will rise soon, or red, the bridge is rising. Wait till the signal is green and drive the train over the river. Great. Now, to deliver the iron ore, stop the hopper in the rotary dumper. When the signal flashes yellow, the hopper is correctly positioned. Uncouple the locomotive and drive it safely away from the dumper. The dumper will automatically empty the iron ore. Congratulations! You're getting to be a real engineer. You've mastered how to use a turntable, bascule bridge, and rotary dumper to deliver some iron ore. Eventually, every engineer has to deal with natural disasters, like when an avalanche blocks a track. The trick is figuring out how to quickly repair the damage and keep the trains running on schedule. There's been an avalanche, and the passenger train can't get through. You're going to have to clear the track. And you don't have much time. These passengers are on a tight schedule, and you've only got five minutes to clear the slide. Use the snow plow to move the slide. Back the passenger train down the track to give room for the plow. Drive the plow forward into the avalanche. The snow plow will automatically clear the slide. Well, this is just great. The switch broke when the plow passed over it. Drive the hand car down to the broken switch. Stop it when it reaches the broken switch. The mechanics will fix the track automatically. Now, drive the hand car back to the depot. job but you did it you managed to fix all the problems with the track and keep your passengers on schedule 